Hello friends, it's Mr. Baines with your daily knowledge lesson. Let's catch up with our friend Rattenborough to see what he has going on today. I hear he might be close by. Today, we are going to learn about the freshwater habitat. Freshwater is water that does not have very much salt in it. It is often water that people can drink. The freshwater habitat is different from the water habitat found in the Arctic Ocean, which is called a saltwater habitat. The water found in oceans is salty and therefore not for drinking. The images that you see right now show different kinds of freshwater habitats, such as rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds. Now, let's join our friend Rattenborough so we can learn more. Hello again, it's your pal Rattenborough here. Glad you could join me. I thought that we needed a real change, so I've come off dry land to a place where it's wet all the time. You guessed it, a lake. A lake is an area of water that is surrounded by land. There is a lot of water in the world. In fact, water covers most of the Earth's surface, but only a tiny part of the world's water is fresh water, the kind of water you and I can drink because it has very little salt in it. Fresh water is found in streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds. The water in these streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds come from rain and from melting ice and snow. Isn't it amazing to think that the water from the drinking fountain at school or from the faucets in your house all come from the rain? I'm here at the water's edge to explore this lake and the plants and animals that call this freshwater habitat home. Freshwater habitats have many kinds of fish, birds, insects, and other animals. Standing here, I can see an enormous leaf in the water. Let me climb onto it so we can get a closer look. This is a water lily leaf. A water lily is a plant that lives in water near the edges of ponds and lakes. Plants are important in freshwater habitats because they make oxygen for animals to breed. Plants are also food for animals to eat and they can provide shelter to protect animals from their predators. The leaves of the water lily are very large, round, and green, and they float on the surface of the water. The water lily is well adapted for living in this habitat. Like the kapok trees in the rainforest, the lily's large leaves let it get as much sunlight as it needs for food and energy. Lilies are also food for many animals, believe it or not. Animals like deer, porcupines, beavers, and turtles all eat leaves, whereas ducks and geese like to eat the roots. Some animals like fish and frogs use the lily leaves as hiding places, and the flowers bring bees and other insects. I'm going to float around the edge of the lake on this water lily leaf, but I'm going to have to leave soon because this pesky turtle will not leave me alone. Well, I've pushed out from the edge of the lake a little, and I already can see another kind of plant that lives here. It's called a cattail. And it gets its name from the unusual way it looks. Thankfully for me, it doesn't have much to do with real cats. Cattails have long, thin stems with foot-long, furry flower spikes at the top that turn from green in early summer to brown in the fall. The flower spike feels soft and furry and looks a little like a cat's tail but I think it looks more like a hot dog. <laughs> the plants can reach up to nine feet in height, which lets them get as much sunlight as they need. As with water lilies, some animals use cattails for food and shelter. Muskrats and geese like to eat the roots of the cattail, and the juicy green shoots are a favorite of my friends, the moose and the elk, who belong to the elk and caribou family, kind of like reindeer. Many kinds of birds make their homes among the cattails. It's very hard to see anything in here because the cattails grow so thickly. So it's a good place for birds to build their nest and to lay and hatch their eggs. Predators like snakes and frogs also live among the cattails and search for animals like birds and insects for food. I think I'm going to move on now. As you know, I'm not very good with snakes. Quickly, come with me beneath the water and let's take a look at what's under there. 
Here you can see some nice looking rainbow trout. Fish can only live in water and they breathe underwater using gills on the sides of their bodies. Gills take in oxygen from the water around them. Fish have strong tails that they use for swimming and fins that they use for steering and balance. The rainbow trout is a carnivore. It eats other water animals like insects, other fish, and sometimes even shellfish. It even eats some small land animals like mice if it gets the chance. So I'm sure it wouldn't mind a nibble of a rat. Mm. Rainbow trout like to live in rivers, but some prefer the deeper water of big lakes. Wow, I really enjoyed exploring beneath the surface of the water. And now I'm going to rest on this lily pad. While I'm drying off a bit, allow me to introduce you to my pal, Billy the Bullfrog. Bullfrogs are amphibious, which means they live both in the water and on land. Bullfrogs are the largest kind of frog found in North America, and they can grow more than a half foot long and weigh more than a pound. That's a really big frog. Bullfrogs get its name from the, from the loud cow-like noises that it makes. I bet birds and turtles would be pretty surprised to know that a frog can make such a loud sound. Pretty neat, huh? This bullfrog is resting now, but it will come out to hunt when it gets dark. Bullfrogs eat a lot of different kinds of food. They are carnivores, so they eat small fish, snakes, birds, and other insects, like this dragonfly that's buzzing around my head. Adult dragonflies are flying insects with long bodies and wings. Dragonflies live around lakes, streams, and other freshwater habitats because they lay their eggs in the water. Adult dragonflies eat other insects like mosquitoes, flies, and bees. The dragonfly uses its long wings to hover around in the air where it catches its food. It has to be careful because the bullfrog isn't the only one that likes to eat dragonflies. Birds and turtles like to eat them too. Uh-oh, the water is getting a little rough out here. Ah, that's why. Here come some birds that like to eat insects. These are a kind of duck called mallards. Ducks are birds and can live both in and out of water. But it's the water where they spend most of their time. Like all birds, ducks like these mallards are covered in feathers. Did you know that ducks' feathers are waterproof? Ducks rub special oil from their tails all over their feathers because oil and water don't mix. Water drips right off the ducks without getting their feathers wet. Ducks float on the surface of the water and have large webbed feet to help them paddle. They dip their heads under the water and use their beaks, which are called bills, to search for food at the bottom of the lake. Mallards eat grasses and seeds from plants and small animals like insects, worms, snails, frogs, and small fish. Well, we've had a good look around this freshwater habitat, but I have to get off this lily before these ducks knock me off. There's another kind of water habitat and we're going to have to look at it next time. I hope you'll join me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to start my long trip back to the shore.